Hi everyone and welcome to Cookie Crumb Fun. I'm Claire. I'm the homeschooling mom to seven and I eat the Trim Healthy Mom away. If you're interested in any of those things, I would love for you to subscribe and come back for more videos in the future on that and go check all the other videos that I've made over the last almost two years about those things. So for today's video, what we're going to do is join a collaboration with my good friend Ingrid at Mommy Meal Homeschool Chronicles and it's called The Heart of Worship. Alright, so for today's video, what I'm going to do is answer some questions that Ingrid came up with about our walk with the Lord, about how we worship the Lord and how we see God and how we, how God is in our lives, alright? I have the questions on my phone, so you're going to see me looking down. I took a screenshot of the questions. So uh, there is a playlist. you got to go check out Ingrid's. Ingrid's videos, she interviewed three other family members, her husband and two of her daughters. And um, I watched part of one already. And then there are others that are going to be joining this collaboration. So go ahead and check out the playlist so you can see what their answers to the questions are. And if you are a YouTuber and you would like to join this collaboration, go ahead and do so. Just make sure you shout out to Ingrid and post the questions in your description box so that other people can see the questions if they want to join and link it to Ingrid's channel and the playlist. So on to the questions. The first question is of all the Ten Commandments, which do you feel is the most important and why? This question is, for me, hard to answer. I can't pick exactly one of the Ten Commandments. I know that they are all equally so important. And one of the ones that really, I think that people don't really see, don't really how do I word it? There is one commandment that, actually two, there are two commandments that a lot of people really don't look at and say, oh, that's what it means. I think you know what I'm saying. So to answer this question, I'm going to get my Bible out. Oh, my little note cards are all falling out. And I'm going to read it to you. I should have marked it. All right. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything. All right. A lot of religions, that's what they do. They have graven images that they bow down to, that they pray to, and that they worship to. Um, I, I pray to God. I don't pray to people, saints. Now, I'm not sitting here and I'm not going to like dish your religion, okay? I'm just letting you know this is what I believe and this is how I feel, right? So I'm not going to turn this into any sort of debate or um, we're not gonna like argue in the comments down below. I'm just letting you know how I feel. And I think as mature adults, we can have this video and have it go out and not create tension, not create arguments, all right? So a lot of religions out there, they, th this commandment right here, no have no other gods before me. You know, they have statues that they worship and that they pray to, they have crosses that they pray to. They have um, idols that they pray and worship to. There's lots of pagan religions that they don't pray to God. They pray to people or things. And that's what this verse is talking about. It says, thou shalt not have, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. All right. Now the other one, you know, when it says thou shalt not bow down to them or serve them, I am the Lord and he's jealous. God is a jealous God and he knows how to punish people when they do wrong. Ask the children of Israel. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And then, years later, they got thrown into captivity in Babylon for 70 years because they wouldn't stop worshiping false gods and idols and repent of their sins. So there you have it. Okay, the next commandment that I think is equally as important is, Thou shalt not take the Lord, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. All right, now, this one is probably a touchy subject with a lot of people, okay? Um, when you say the Lord's name as a cuss word, you're taking his name in vain. Um, there is a phrase that bazillions of people use out there in the world, and many Christians use this. They write OMG and say, they say it, they say, oh my God. I mean, I feel bad even saying it just then, okay? But I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it as people do it. That is taking the Lord's name in vain. I don't think people realize that that's what it is. I had somebody when I was younger, they said to me that whenever somebody did something like that, they would say under their voice, 
something just slipped under my door. I think my kids are out there. Serious time here. They said under their voice, or they would say, they wouldn't say it to the person, like verbally, like in their face. They would say it to themselves, praise his name. And I really liked that, but I could never get enough guts to do it. But now that I'm older and wiser, it's a lot easier for me to do. But just to let you know, when you say, oh my God, when you write OMG, when you say Jesus' name as like in shock, you know, I'm not talking about when you praise him. That's, that's totally different. When you say praise Jesus, you know, oh, glory to God, that's totally different because you're giving honor to him. But you're taking his name in vain and using it as a cuss word and saying OMG, that in my eyes is taking his name in vain. All right. So that was a long answer to a short question. So sorry. But let's move on to number two. When did Jesus first become real to you? All right. I started, we started going to church when I was four years old. Um, someone knocked on our door, invited us to church. And then when I was seven, I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. I realized I was a sinner. I um, asked him to come into my heart and to save me of my sins and uh, to take me to heaven when I die. And when I was 13, I gave my life to the Lord to do whatever he wanted me to do. And through those times is when I would say Jesus became real to me. The Lord became real to me. All right, so uh, number three, tell about a time when God answered one of your prayers. I'm going to give you a more recent one in the last few years. Um, I always talk about our story about when we moved to California. I was born and raised in New York, went off to Bible college, met my husband, got married. We moved to California for a couple years, and then we moved back to New York. And my heart is in the state of New York. My heart is not, was not at the time in California. I, we lived here and struggled for two years, um, finding a place to live, the cost of things. We had our first child out here, the stress of that. Um, in New York, I, we all have stresses in everyday life, but that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted New York. And when the Lord finally revealed to me that this is the time to move to California and for your husband, he, I want him to start this church. That is when we finally moved in 2000 and what was that, 15 in the fall. And let me tell you, God answered so many prayers on that move. From the time that I said to my husband, I am sorry that I've said no to this for all these years, because I said no to it for over 13 years, that I kept saying no to God, I don't want to do this, that he opened so many doors. I still, I keep saying all the time that I need to make a video on it, and I really do. All the doors that the Lord opened, he provided every penny we needed to move because from the moment I said yes to the moment that we moved was six weeks. We packed up a family of seven and we moved across country. Got rid of more than half of our stuff. And let me tell you, the one thing that is the greatest answer of prayer that we've had in our lives from that move is not only finances that the Lord provided for the move, for when we first got here, finances, you know, paying for, I know rent is three times as much, food costs twice as much here, gasoline costs more here, everything costs more here, okay? You're paying 69 cents for eggs, I'm paying 279 for eggs, okay? So the Lord, the day we moved, sorry, it keeps moving, I need to move it, the wind is blowing through. The day we moved, we did not have a place to live when we got here. There were, st we we're still applying for places. Now my in-laws lived out here and they were trying to find a place for us. So we moved on a Monday. Sunday afternoon, I'm sitting in the car crying my eyes out. Maybe God doesn't want us to move. All my stuff's packed. I threw away half my stuff. Everything I own is in that pod container. Okay? And I'm sitting there crying thinking maybe God doesn't want us to move. Oh, ye of little faith, right? Two days later on Wednesday. Okay, so we moved on Monday. Wednesday night after church, we got a phone call from the landlord saying, we're going to give you the, the house to rent. That was huge. You have no idea how we had a little worship service right there. We praised the Lord, hoot and hollered in the van that night. It was, a, I'm getting emotional right now, I'm just thinking about it. I, For women, we need that security of, of a home to live in when we move, right? And I didn't have that. And then finally the Lord gave it to us and it was a humongous answer to prayer. All right, so I'll, I'll end it there. Okay, number three. Oh, that was number three. Number four, complete the sentence. I wish God would. I wish, can I answer it in two ways? One way is I wish God would return 
sooner than he is, has not done yet. But also, I wish that the Lord would reveal to these godless countries like he did in Bible times, like during the Bible. You know how like the children of Israel wandered for complaining for 40 years? We complain. We deserve that sort of punishment. We live in a time of grace. We're not going to get that sort of punishment. We're not going to be, we don't have to sacrifice lambs and stuff. But if God punished us as severely as they got punished in the Old Testament, I think that we would not be as much sinners as we are. I really believe that, that we would see God more. Many of you watching this, you, you believe in God and you see God in your daily lives, okay? But I'm talking about the people who don't see God, the people who say they're a Christian but never go to church, the people who say they're a Christian but then they, you know, they do the worldly things, you know? There's no God in their life. And I'm not talking about killing them. I'm talking about just opening their eyes, having some sort of action due to these people to open up their eyes. And even us Christians who are saved, who have Jesus, who know we're going to be going to heaven when we die. Like today, if I were to be shot down dead right now, I know that I would wake up in heaven. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. And even to us, it would bring us closer to God to have those punishments more severe. Okay, that's, all right, I'm going to end it there. All right, number five, complete the sentence. If God were to make an announcement to the world tomorrow, I wish it would be that. Thought of it. So my answer for this, I'm thinking and I'm like, wouldn't you love to know that Jesus is going to say today, oh, I'm returning tomorrow. I'm going to take you all to heaven. And then, um, you know, tribulation, all that stuff. But then I'm thinking, you don't want to know because it's going to happen in a blink of an eye. It's going to happen in a moment, in a blink of an eye. And you don't want to know, you know. Um, but I really, I, I'm having a hard time answering this question. I may have to come back to that if I cannot answer. I, what, what, I wish that it would be, you know, I really can't it come to the world that announces to the world. I'm sure some ladies in these videos have amazing answers, but for right now, I, I cannot come up with an answer for this and I don't want to say anything. you know, that's just whatever, you know, that's just for saying something. There are so many things that we would want the Lord to come back. I, you know, if he told everybody to repent of their sins, if he came out and said, Jesus died for you on the cross, you know, if he came back and said all the things that pastors and missionaries and evangelists are preaching and teaching, maybe people would hear it. You never know. Maybe that's my answer right there. All right. Number six, complete the sentence. I have learned from reading the Bible is, there's so much that you learn from reading the Bible. To be compassionate towards others, to be, to lessons that you learn. Um, you learn gratitude, your gratefulness, thankfulness, ways to live. You know, God reveals to you through the, the men and women in the Bible, different things. And I'm just in awe of some of these things of, of that happened in the Bible. But I can't really say he revealed something to me. Um, he, it, it's like there's lessons to be learned in the Bible, and those are the lessons. Now I haven't learned everything. I'm not an, a biblical expert or anything, you know. Just because my husband is the pastor of our church does not make me a Bible scholar. But using the mystery of history has increased my Bible knowledge. Little things in life that help you day to day, you know. All right, what Bible character are you most like and why? I was thinking about uh, the widow and her son, who the prophet came to them and said, make me some bread with the last bit of oil and flour that you have. And she goes, we're gonna about to die, make it ourselves and pass out and die over here. And you want me to give it to you? You know, so she had that little bit of faith enough to give it to him and make it. And he said, you'll never go hungry after this. You know, you'll always have some. And what happened? She always had oil and flour. She doubted God. And that's how I was like when our move about coming to California, I doubted God so much. I'm like, you want me to give you what I love? The last thing that it's like helping me live my life, helping me survive. And once I gave him that, he showed me, he's like, Claire, this is what I wanted all along for you. Look at all these blessings that I just threw in your lap because you finally are doing what I wanted you to do. So the widow, okay? 
if you can go back in time into Bible story, what would it enter? What would you like to enter? I definitely would not be the crucifixion because that right now, I, I to, oh, that would be so sad to see and so heartbreaking. All the people and the negativity and the hatred, but also all the love and the sadness. I, I, I don't know. I would love to go back to um, like David and Goliath, you know, to the time where people believed that God brought them through hard times and brought the victory, not themselves. Today, people think they do it all themselves. In the Bible, people gave the glory to God. How about when they, the, the, um, the, the, the Jews got released from Babylon, Babylonian captivity after 70 years and they were let to go back to Judea and to continue their lives. And they started building the temple and they had that great celebration you can read about in Ezra. And they rejoiced and had a party and woohoo, you know, the noise could be heard everywhere. But at the same time, the elders were crying because they knew if they had just turned from their sins and repented, that none of that captivity would have ever happened. The Lord never have made that happen. That would have been amazing to see. You know, when uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace and then there was a fourth man in there. Could you imagine seeing that? And how fearful King was? Wow. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I'm gonna end up going to lots of stories. Okay, let's see. Name three people who have inspired you to be a better Christian. All right, I, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say it was Jack Hiles because he was the man who was the pastor of our church and chancellor and the founder of the Bible college that we went to. And um, he made your impact on my life. On um, his wife, Beverly Hiles. Um, huge, huge difference in my life. Huge, just, just huge. And then the other person is Elizabeth Elliot. She is the book that, she wrote a book about their, the testimony of her husband and hers um, mission in Ecuador that God used that book and spoke to my heart and changed my heart towards California. So those three people. All right, complete the sentence. I feel closest to God when, it, when I'm reading my Bible, when I am right with others, when I am praying and faithful to my walk with the Lord. And uh, it's sporadic because I'm not always faithful to what I need to do. I have a plan of where I'm doing a Bible study and reading through John and going back in the Old Testament and reading about the Judeans captivity, the Jews captivity, because it's so amazing to look at that. And it's just eye opening. Okay. Um, so when you're, when I am doing what I'm supposed to do in my walk with the Lord by praying and reading my Bible, that is when really when we all feel closest to God, I would believe. All right. What is your favorite inspirational song? All right. There are so many, but I have a favorite hymn and that one of them is and can it be and that's talking about when you're bound and chained in sin and then you come to see Jesus and you're you're set free and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's love died he for me who caused his pain okay, it goes on you can just look it up it's called and can it be that song is amazing it starts off by saying you know I'm a sinner I found Jesus and then it goes talking about my ch my chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. You know, it's talking about how you know I you woke up, you got saved, you repented, and now you're following and walking with Jesus. That's a really good song. All right, now number twelve. How would you spend the time if God sent a flood for forty days and forty nights, as He did in the days of Noah on the ark? Um, I would be working with Noah and all the other animals. Maybe I'm not interpreting, interpreting this question correctly. How would you spend the time if God sent a flood for 40 days and 40 nights as he did in the days of Noah? Um, there'd probably be a lot of prayer and a lot of um, revival on the boat because we know more now than we did before. Noah didn't have the Bible. Noah didn't have all the stories and all the lessons that were learned because this happened, you know, uh, 4,000 years ago. So I think that we would spend more time in revival on Noah's Ark than, I'm not saying that Noah didn't pray, I'm sure they spent a lot of time praying, but there was just the, the, um, the six, eight of them on there and they took care of all the animals. If that was done again today, probably have more than one Ark, right? And um, there would be more people to help out so we would have more time to have that revival. I believe revival would break out on the Ark if, 
it happened today. All right, David played his harp and sang to God. If you sang a song to God today, what would it be about? It would just um, thankfulness because there's a song, I just want to thank you, Lord, because he's done so much for you. And that, when we express our thankfulness to God, that's why he created us, to worship him. And, by when, and when we express our thankfulness to God, that gives him the glory for all that he has done, all that he's done in our lives. And that sort of song is what I would sing to the Lord. I cannot sing. You just heard me try to sing a minute ago. I cannot sing. All right, I'm, I do not have the gift of musical, a musical gift. I have other talents that the Lord has given me. All right, Jonah tried to run away from God. Have you ever tried to do the same one? I, I mentioned that earlier. Sorry, I was cut off, my camera shut off, and now I'm trying to remember where I was. Um, Jonah ran away from God. Yes, I was talking about how I said no to moving to California all those years, and then finally said yes, and the Lord blessed, just as he did with Jonah. You know, Jonah said no, he tried to run, and then when he finally went, everybody repented. Well, with me, I did not want to go to California. I did not want to move here. I didn't want to live here. I didn't want to raise my family here, but I did not want to be a pastor's wife. But, you know, God's like, Claire, you've been saying no. And you, when I finally said yes, and God opened up my heart and said, this is what I want you to do, we moved here, and it's lonely here, but, you know, I have no friends and family here, but... I know that the Lord wants us here. So, all right, if you had to the courage of David when he killed Goliath, what giant would you like to slay in your life? All right, that's the last question. What giant do I want to slay in my life? The, the giant of self-doubt, we question ourselves so much. I'm tired of questioning, you know, oh, should I do this, should I do that, you know? And I'm not saying like, you know, oh, should I, you know, it's not all sin, it's just, choices that we make each day i wish that i had the courage to to oh my word i wish i had the courage to be more brave in so many ways in my life and i wish i had the courage to be stronger in a lot of ways in my life also and I know that the Lord will provide the courage when you need it, when we pray and ask for it. And it's lessons that we learned that, you know, when we experience times where we need that courage, God wants us to run to him and fall on our knees and ask for that courage. But I, when, I, when we moved, I wish I had courage. I wish I was more brave when we moved. Um, and knowing that we would be here and knowing you know, God did not show me that I would be so alone here and so so friendless here, so just alone in general. You have my family, I have my children and my husband, that's all we have. Um, other family members live far away, we see them at church, but it's not like I don't have a buddy, I don't have a friend, you know? And I don't even know if this is answering the question. Is this even answering the question? The, if, if I had known all of that before we moved, I probably never would have said yes. I probably would have kept saying no, you know, but I, I just had faith that God would provide everything. And, and I'm glad that he gave me the courage to say yes and finally realize, you know, what I had been doing wrong. But just the courage of everyday life, the courage to conquer everything in your everyday. The courage and that I need, like, like I mentioned, self-doubt. We doubt ourselves in all areas. You know, we don't think we're thin enough. We think we're too fat. We don't think our clothes are good enough. We don't think that our hair is pretty enough. The, our skin complexion is good enough. My makeup is good enough. You know, my house is clean enough. You know, if God would just say, you know, almost in a way like slap my face, say, stop it, Claire. You know, um, just the everyday self-doubt that we throw on us. You know, the guilt trips is in, in mommyhood and homeschool land and, and, and wifedom, you know. And now me, in the, in, for the last two years, being a pastor's wife, I mean, our church is small. I, there's no one that I've needed to counsel, you know? But I, I'm hoping that he'll give me the courage to do what is right in those times. And the wisdom really is what I need then. Oh, oh my goodness. I feel that answer was all over the place. Did that make any sense? 
anyway, I'm going to end that there because that was the last question. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you to maybe think of these answers for your, on your own. Take these questions and just put them on your life. If you're not a YouTuber, don't make the video, but just dwell on them yourself and see what you believe and why you believe some of it. So if you would like to watch others doing this same collaboration, the same uh, answering the same questions, go ahead and check out the playlist below and go support Ingrid's channel, Mommy Mia Homeschool Chronicles. Lots on homeschool, lots on cooking. Um, she's just, she's inspirational, she really is. And I've always enjoyed her encouraging homeschool videos because she's encouraging in her videos about her homeschool. But um, she's a really good chef too. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and um, be nice down in the comments because yeah, so let's just be nice to each other. That's all I have to say. All right, so until next time, be a blessing. Somebody just put